on the, on the topic of education, uh, a lot of people will typically say like, "Oh, I, I hate math. I I didn't know math when I was in yeah. in grade school, and it's it's kind of a problem." But a lot of the talks I've seen you give describe math using uh, pieces of art and yeah. describing symmetries. Do you think that there should be kind of a, a different way to teach math? For yes, a lot of people? I do. I mean, I have some concrete ideas about that, <laughs> which, which may be wacky. I'm not certainly not an educa- uh, uh, an authority on education. I'm a, but. Uh, but a lot of people like math without knowing it. No, now mm-hmm. that knowing that they like don't, that they like it because they they think of math as arithmetic or, or algebra, and they got confused in the early stages of algebra and sort of never recovered. <laughs> uh, but if you go to the supermarket <laughs> and look look at uh, the kinds of magazines they sell. Well, they sell a lot of hidden word problems and stuff. That, that, that's not mathematics. But, but uh, they also sell these logic, books of logic puzzles that really are mathematics. There's hidden mathematics, you know, right. that, that, uh, are, that can, they can be quite challenging, actually. It's very impressive. So people do this for fun, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think, peop- I think there should be much more stress on logic puzzles and things like that mm-hmm. in... Uh, in math training that don't don't necessarily even involve numbers but involve working with concepts and and i think uh, it would be very good to teach logic both formal and informal logic uh, as opposed to say trigonometry not not that not that there's anything wrong with trigonometry <laughs> but but you know the uh, maybe in in the modern world the the, 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 the priority and, and to be more inclusive i think there should be other priorities uh, and uh, and another in, in the in the realm of geometry, I, I, one of the little joys of my adult life has been learning about uh, how projective geometry is used in art to draw things because I'm mm-hmm. I'm truly horrible at drawing. It's unbelievably bad at drawing, but. With the help of basic ideas of uh, perspective and making grids and so forth, which mm-hmm. is is a one is a really relaxing activity. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, you can draw things that are quite uh, striking, and uh, I mean I can, I, that, and 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 that I think instead of teaching Euclidean geometry the way Euclid did, I think it would be a really good thing to do. Projective mm-hmm. geometry, and, and and integrate that with the study of art because uh, it's historically it was a tremendous thing in, in art when when the, that was developed was first developed in the Renaissance. And so you could be learning about that and as well, learning the techniques and and producing beautiful objects all at the same time. And uh, so and and then another place where I think there could be uh, innovation is teaching more about symmetry from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think the, the mathematics curriculum kind of got ossified, and I, but I think more logic, more symmetry, more uh, art, <laughs> specifically projective geometry, would, would really uh, bring more people in and get them excited. And then they can fill in the trigonometry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I think so in other words, I guess the, the overriding theme is to make things more concrete, not to demand at the very beginning levels of abstraction that kind of can discourage people if they don't get it or just leave people cold because who cares about this? You know, who cares about solving abstract equations <laughs> between, <laughs> between symbols, you know? <laughs> but, all right. Uh, 